Come on, elf boy, show me what you're made of. It's time for an arm wrestle. Welcome to Game Theory, where today it's time to dust off the pixel rulers and unpack the bad puns because we're doing it old school style. Today is Game Theory Retro Edition, a blast from the past as we cover the absurd science and math behind one of gaming's oldest and most iconic characters, Link, aka Hero of Time, aka Zelda, to all the 80s and 90s kids who played the games without ever reading the manual and assumed that the series would be named after the main character. Link is a hero who, at least in my personal opinion, is actually pretty underrated in terms of his strength. In any debate about strongest video game characters, you're always gonna hear about Minecraft Steve's ability to carry giant gold blocks, or Kratos' latest beatdown where he takes a mythological creature and manually separates torso from cranium. Sorry, had to censor all that last bit. Literally nothing Kratos does in his games is brand safe for us to use here. And then you have Link. Well, sure, we're all familiar with the items he uses. The bow, the boomerang, bombs, and hookshot, which we covered on a previous episode of Game Theory, but I don't think Link gets enough credit for how much strength he's packed even when he isn't pulling things out of his Mary Poppins-esque bottomless satchel. So today, I'm gonna show you how buff this guy actually is, and why Hylian's little Keebler elf over here could totally hold his own against modern characters much bigger and badder and brand unsafe than him, as well as Minecraft Steve. I mean, who needs the Triforce of Power when he's already got himself the Triforce of Power Lifting? And it all starts with Link's most basic item, the Hylian Shield. You see, Link's Hylian Shield is made entirely of metal, at least in in some iterations it is. In the original Ocarina of Time, you could see, based on the back of the shield, that the thing was metal throughout. Something which, interestingly enough, was changed in Ocarina of Time 3D, where parts of it were suddenly changed to be made out of wood. Now, why do I call this out? Well, a fully metal construction makes it very unusual for a one-armed shield. Throughout history, most one-handed shields were primarily wood or animal hide, with a small rounded metal part called a shield boss at the center being used to deflect most of the blows and mount the handle. The reason for this was actually simple. Having less metal made the whole thing lighter and easier to carry. So knowing that Link's shield is mostly, if not completely, made of metal shows just how strong that shield arm of his is. I better use my strong hand. In fact, we can calculate it. We know from Breath of the Wild that the Hylian shield is made of a ferromagnetic metal. We can use the Magnesis rune in order to pick it up. So knowing this, we can assume that the shield is made of iron. Doing some quick pixel measurements here, we find that the shield's height is just under 1 meter and is about 3.36 centimeters thick. That gives us a total shield volume of roughly 14,515 cubic centimeters, which we then multiply by the density of iron to see that the basic Hylian shield weighs a whopping 252 pounds. That is insanely heavy, especially when you compare it to the weight of a typical real-world medieval shield, which would usually weigh in at 10 pounds or less. And here's my boy just hefting over 250 pounds with one arm every time he wants to block a flying knot. Talk about overkill, my man. It's no wonder that Child Link can't lift the shield with his arms and has to crouch under it like a turtle shell. It's more a miracle he doesn't get crushed by the darn thing. The reason I use this as my first example is just to make a quick point. Link is a lot stronger than a lot of us give him credit for. Yes, all those years of pot smashing finally paid off with Link being equipped with both a sword and guns. But um ching Funny enough, these new findings actually explain away some of the conclusions I reached years ago. Way back in the year of our lord, 2014, a year full of turnt up bays and man buns, I did an episode examining the physics of Link's hookshot, concluding that the darn thing was so powerful that it would rip his arm clean off. But now we have ourselves new evidence suggesting that, simply put, his arms are just really, really, really strong. Strong enough to withstand the massive amount of force the iconic item dishes out. Just goes to show that real men wear tights. Which now means it's time to take our research all the way. Sure, we're getting hints here and there about the extent of Link's strength, but now's the time to find where that strength
strength maxes out. And let's be honest, Link's feats of strength throughout the series are numerous, from lifting giant metal cannonballs over his head and jogging around in Twilight Princess to climbing vertically on sheer rock surfaces throughout Breath of the Wild. But if you've ever played these games, I think we can all agree there was one moment of Link's strength that was so ridiculous, so absurd, and so cool that it was burned into our brains from the first moment we witnessed it. And that was the Ocarina of Time Golden Gauntlet Deadlift. In case you need a refresher, it looked a little something like this. Someone keep this man away from the caber toss. And that is the strength of the Power Glove. I love the Power Glove. It's so bad. Let's first set our baseline by finding out how strong Link is without the gloves. In Ocarina of Time, we see gloveless Link struggle when pushing around the giant puzzle blocks that exist inside of dungeons. And when you look at their size, it's no wonder he's scooching these things around inch by inch. But how big are they and how much do they weigh? Well, glad you asked. The fact that these blocks all seem to be perfect cubes implies that they're made of some kind of stone that would be easy to carve. We also know that these stones come in a variety of colors, ranging from green to yellow to red. And lastly, each comes carved with a Gerudo marking, the desert tribe that gave rise to Ganondorf, which implies that the stone could have once been found in deserts or areas of dried up water. Based on those clues, it's highly likely that the blocks that we see in Ocarina of Time are made of limestone. The texture matches, the colors match, and it's a soft enough stone to carve with primitive rock carving tools. In fact, there are reasons why limestone was a common choice of material for ancient building societies. And wouldn't you know it, but the base rock of many deserts is, in fact, limestone. IRL, for example, the Sahara is covered with limestone, made mostly of the skeletons of microscopic sea creatures from the sea that once dried up there centuries ago. So looking up the density of limestone, we can now calculate the weight of these blocks simply by knowing their dimensions. We can measure the height of the blocks by comparing their height to Link's. We know from this past episode that Link measures in at 1.7 meters, or 5 foot 6 inches tall. As a refresher, this was calculated in-game by comparing Link's height to the measuring marks at the Lakeside Laboratory found in Lake Hylia. It's also a fact that is reconfirmed based on this data from the Smash Brothers games. So using the height of Link's model as our measuring stick, we find that the push blocks are 306 centimeters or just over 10 feet tall. Cube that and we get ourselves 28.65 cubic meters. Then multiply that by the density of limestone and we find that these cubes that Link is pushing around all the way in at a whopping 77,677 kilograms. 171,000 pounds. That is over 85 tons of weight that he's pushing. For comparison, an unloaded train car is usually 25 to 30 tons. A fully loaded box car will usually clock in at under 70. This single block weighs as much as 190 grand pianos. And remember, this is just the basic block of stone without him using any gloves. You know, when you play the game, it can sometimes be easy to become annoyed at how slow Link pushes these things, making it a chore to finish the block mazes in the forest temple, but looking at how heavy these dang things are, I think we need to cut Link some slack. It's impressive that he's able to budge them at all. Again, if I'm being 100% accurate and way too nitpicky, which you know I always am, he's technically pushing the blocks, meaning that he's only having to exert enough force to overcome the frictional force that exists between the block and the floor, and doing that calculation, which I did off screen, I didn't want to bore you with the details, but anyway, the amount of force he's exerting there is less, a mere 128 thousand pounds. So you know what? Take back everything I just said, slacker. Get good, fam. Steve carries blocks that heavy shoved down his pants. But now, my friends, we get to the good stuff. Just how much are those silver and gold gauntlets enhancing his strength? Solving for the silver gauntlets is actually surprisingly easy. Link uses them to push the much larger blocks that exist in the spirit temple. So all we need to do here is just scale up the calculations. Analyze the dimensions of the block, determine its weight, calculate what force Link is exerting to push that thing using our known frictional coefficient. So once again, we use Link as our measuring stick and find that these blocks are over twice his height, 408 centimeters tall. For a total volume of 67.9 cubic meters, a weight of 184,000 kilograms or 406,000 pounds, and then if you add in the frictional component, it requires a horizontal pushing force of 304,000 pounds. Comparing that 304,000 pound silver gauntlet push feet to his 128,000 pound pushing feet without the gauntlets, we see that the silver gauntlets, in a surprising twist, work out to almost exactly doubling Link's strength. He's exactly 2.37 times more powerful with the silver gauntlets than without them. 
really cool finding, actually. Well done, Nintendo. I know you didn't intentionally mean it, but impressive nonetheless. And now for the granddaddy. The literal gold standard for absurd feats of strength in one of the most storied game franchises in history. The Golden Gauntlet Deadlift. And here, it's important to note that this requires a different kind of strength entirely. First off, he's dealing with a much larger object. Secondly, he's actually lifting it off the ground instead of just sliding it across the floor. And third, he's actually flinging it into the air so it lands behind him. Let's start by looking at the pillar itself. It's a different texture from the blocks that we've seen so far, so we can't assume that it's the same material. Based on its color and texture, it looks most similar to granite, probably most closely related to black forest granite. While I'd love to milk the next set of measurements for additional runtime in this episode so those sweet, sweet YouTube watch minutes come pouring in, you know what? I'm not gonna bore you with those or delay the results any longer. Looking at its dimensions, including its height, the shape of the base, the shape of the pointed end buried into the ground, we can calculate this giant column to have a volume of about 258.9 cubic meters, or over 9,000 cubic feet. It's over 9,000! That's about the volume of 450 refrigerators. Now, we multiply by the known density of granite and get ourselves a final weight of 712,000 kilograms. 1.57 million pounds. That is more than three times the weight of the blocks that he was pushing around in the spirit temple. It's the equivalent of six and a half blue whales, nine space shuttles, one fifteenth of the Eiffel Tower. Okay, that last one doesn't sound that impressive, but still, it's impressive. And he isn't even taking the easy way out this time. 1.57 million pounds is the vertical force that he needs to lift it cleanly off the ground. That is five times stronger than he is in the silver gauntlets and 12 times stronger than he is normally. It's an insane amount of arm strength, one that puts 99.9% .9 of other game characters to shame. And yet he still struggles to walk around the second he puts on the iron boots. And that, my friends, is why you don't skip leg day. And don't even get me started about his lame stamina meter either. Gotta do those cardio days too there, Link. As it currently stands, based on our calculations today, the hero of time is probably more accurately described as the gym bro of the bicep curl. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching.